Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and uh, this is the summary for the day of the 30th of September for the day of 950 and uh, this includes the latest information from the 1st of October and uh, yeah, this Sibrat comes a bit late, I understand because I was super tired no, no major developments at the, no at the, at the front lines, you know, and I, I have to you no know, go for the emergency briefing uh, over in Kremlin. I mean, no, no. I mean, I was out for to 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 do my hair and um yeah. Anyway, uh, we go to uh start off with some frontline changes report. There is some of the latest frontline changes report, and uh, so there is frontline changes at Sukarini, and uh, <clears throat> this is over uh this additional update uh. From the based on Ukrainian mapping, uh, so this is by Deep State UA. Uh, in the latest Ukrainian mapping, uh, Russian forces uh, actually captures even more grounds than previously understood. Let me zoom in. So according to the Ukrainian mapping, the Russian forces actually taken the entire southern uh, two streets of Sukarine, including you know this entire uh, mine mining uh, facility and uh, areas. Uh, according to the Ukrainian mapping. So this is much bigger than uh, what I mapped based on the geolocation. So pretty significant uh, as Sukarini, which means that the Russians now have a firm foothold over in this uh, small small town. And uh, so this is uh, the latest uh, frontline change over at Sukarini. The next frontline change is over at Konstantinivka. So uh, over in uh, the south of Konstantinivka, very interesting uh so we have this gray zone that uh never went away for a long time suddenly there is a geolocation so this geolocation as a result uh it's a allegedly is an assault an attack by russian forces south of Konstantinivka. so this is a bit of a surprise so i'm not sure if the ukrainians actually have positions around here actually so russian forces attack which means that uh they invalidated some of the ukrainian claims uh, so I'm still not entirely sure with the exact situation right here. Maybe I need to go and check it out the video. I'll report to you more uh, later or uh, if I have any information. So very small update because this comes at the same time where Russians are, are already making pushes of all the other places. So this comes up as a, as a really weird uh, situation. So um, <clears throat> and then uh, we have frontline changes over at Vodiane. So, so this these two chunk so let me this 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 is the latest update from also the ukrainian mapping so uh deep state ua have mapped that the russian uh, you the they have this claim this area of the uh, verdiani the 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 south donbass mine tree and then uh, they also expe expanded the front line much further in the in the very suggestive uh, manner uh, over in all these areas here. So this means that the Russian forces have taken more grounds and uh, this this area here is is this facility. Not sure what kind of facility is this. Looks like a uh, mining related stuff. So so this entire area is now under Russian control and the uh, Russians is now well on the way towards Bohol Yevlenka. Bohol Yevlenka is over here and uh, is also probably known as Dubrovilia. So so this is the update here. We'll probably talk. We'll definitely talk more later in, in the rest of the sit wrap, and uh, the latest update. And this is the most breaking important news. I already published this uh, on Twitter and Telegram, based on the latest Joe locations. These three Joe locations confirm that the Russians have fully captured Voleda. So this means that the Russian forces have planted uh, at least five five flags. And uh, this means that the Russian forces fully, fully captured the entire of Voleda, which lets the DPA to declare the Voleda, the fortress city of Voleda, as captured by the Russian forces. We will have a lot to talk about in the situation report. Very, very uh, uh, major development. Uh, so these are the frontline changes uh, since the frontline changes report. And now we're going to go into the strategy and tactical reporting. And I think... Uh, I will go from the south and going anti-clockwise because I think so that we can talk about Voleda uh, earlier. So first thing first, uh, we have uh, we have some train station strikes. Let me let me see. So the Russian forces uh, launched strikes on 
uh, two different train stations. So one is over in the Kursk region, uh, near the Kursk region in the Sumi region, um, where or oh, this is a Lancet. This is not a. I mean, uh, it's not. Uh, yeah, they strike a train station. Yeah, a uh, Lancet hit the uh, Ukrainian fuel train over in a uh, Samatoyevka. So this this train station here got strike by the Russian forces. But this one is by Lancet, and uh, there's another another one is over in the Kryvyi region. Uh, in the Kazanka. So this one is allegedly a uh, ammunition train that was hit by a Eskanda. So it's this train station. So uh this this is two train stations getting hit uh when we usually don't even have uh, uh all these strikes on train station. So this is uh, getting a bit feeling a bit more intense. So in the Kherson front, uh Kherson front Russian forces shelled Antonivka as well as Kherson. So but that's all nothing else to report about over in the Kherson. Over in the Zaporizhia front, at the Zaporizhia front, we have fighting reported at Malatomashka. The, there is no location of uh, Russian airstrikes in Malatomashka. So I'm not sure if this is related to this uh, report of the sh attack uh, by the Russian side, according to the Russian Defense Ministry. This over in the Orykiv sector. So otherwise, the, the rest of the the Zaporizhia front remains really quiet. Uh, Kayamske sector, Orykiv sector, Huyapole sector, so these are the sectors. Very quiet. Uh, we move on into the Donetsk front. So over the Veliko Novosilka sector, Russian forces have made some gains according to Russian claims over in Zolotan Neva. Fighting is reported over here. There is fighting reported at Rifnopil, uh, also according to the Russian Defense Ministry. So Little Neva is reported by Russian Defense Ministry and Ukrainian Defense Ministry. So there is definitely some fighting in the Zoleta Neva region. This is a natural progression. Given whatever that's happening over in the rest of the Donetsk front, which I will pull over here, given the fact that the Russians are now making massive pushes over in the Vodiane, uh, Voleda region, uh, this is a natural progression so that they can attack into Shetaske. And as the Russians also did, previously pushed for Novo Ukrainka. So in this movement, uh, this will naturally just eliminate all the all the uh, plantations and uh, farming easier for the Russians to you know complete. So uh, the the mapping by the Russians uh seems to suggest that the Russians are just close to Zolotan Neva, but of course take this with a pinch of salt because their mapping is very vague, very hard to see. Uh, and you can see that it's pretty much open ground here. So whatever it is, the Russians are already on striking distance of Zolota, Zolota Neva. Uh, we will see the battle of Zolota Neva very, very soon. Um, probably the next two days. Over in the Voleda region, which is where our core focus is. So let's, let's take a look at the entirety of the capture. Russian forces in the last uh, 36 hours have captured all these grounds. It, they have expanded their buffer zone, a uh, uh, buffer and a uh, uh, control zone around Vodiane, pushing towards Bohovyevlanka. They have taken the entire mine, uh, the South Donbass mine one, including the hills. They have also fully overrun the fortress city of Voleda in one single soup, in one single day. And this comes after many, 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 many days of uh, of heavy bombardments, uh, that renders the en the entire fortress city of Voleda untenable. And this is a stark difference uh, to how the Battle of Voleda previously have unfolded around two years ago, where the Russians uh, were pushing. Maybe around one and a half year ago, when uh, Wagner was still a thing, you know, when the Battle of Bakhmut is still ongoing, some uh, Russian commander very cleverly thinking that you no, know, he could take Vol Voleda and uh, show the show Prigozhin, uh, uh, no show the to the world or to the Russian world that you know the Russian army is just as good as you know, Prigozhin and Wagner. You know he wanted to fight and and his troops all died bad horribly. Uh, it was a terrible operation, and now we're seeing that the Russians totally operates in a totally different way, and. And it's, it's amazing to watch the transformation uh, from a Soviet era you no know, army, you no know, a BT BTG led army to what we are seeing today, the, uh, the where the Russians operate in the most advanced and most uh, modernized way of fighting, which is unlike anything that we have ever seen before, uh, in uh, previous uh, wars. 
So this is very, very interesting. But of course, the, prim the primary principle of fighting is actually didn't change that much. It's always, if you have air superiority, you're going to have advantage, which is what we see in Voleda where the air superiority and the fire firepower superiority just makes it so much more easier for the Russians right now. And the Ukrainians just don't have what it takes you know, to, to compete anymore, unfortunately. And uh, whatever they have, they are now you know, throwing it into the Kursk region. So at uh, uh, Voleda, the first information first came out with the Russians raising the flag in the garage. And then also in this uh, building uh, uh, north of the uh, hospital. Ukrainian mapping actually showed the Russian forces located south of the hospital. And this led to the entire collapse of the uh, eastern flank of Voleda. Uh, sorry, western flank of Voleda, where we have this major update during the frontline changes report. And given the fact that the Russians have moving so so uh, so openly, the entire southern flank is also declared by DPA to be entirely has fallen. There was previous rumors uh, a few days ago where the Russian forces allegedly have taken this half. Uh, so clearly, this doesn't make a lot of sense. But whatever it is, uh, the flag is only raised now with the Russian forces raised three different flags. And uh, this marks the full capture of Voleda because there will be, there will be no, no reason for the Ukrainians to be here. The, the, the entire region is definitely is fully captured by the Russian forces right now. Whether there are still remnants of uh, Ukrainian forces is hard to say. Um, but we declare the capture regardless uh, because there is no reason to believe that... Uh, that the, the 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 main reason why you no know, usually I will not I usually I will still put this you no know, blue bar here you no know, this blue column as uncaptured yet but the reason is because the way how the Russians raise the flag they are super relaxed uh the 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 so the fact that they are so relaxed is shows that there is no more enemies around the region so uh it's just a matter of time that uh, the entire city is going to be fully captured anyway so anyway anyway major major uh, update in the Voleda and um so uh further up northeast uh the the mapping also seen that the Russian forces are making huge advance in the South Dom uh, Donbass coal mine one region so this means that the Russian forces uh, the entire Ukrainian force around this area have fully redrawn so how far they go to redraw we do not know this is a reminiscence of the situation over in the Pokrov front where the ukrainian forces keep retreating keep retreating keep retreating uh, in, and losing huge amount of grounds which caused us to change the name from edifka front to pokrov front because the front line have moved so far from edifka and now we are going to see the same thing with these massive massive uh changes and if you look at the terrain you know that there is no no much place that the ukrainians could properly properly defend we're going to see some massive, massive, massive frontline changes in the next few days uh, where the Ukrainian forces have to move to a new place of new defense line, which is probably around here. This is going to be the next defense line. All these grounds south of this blue line I've just, just drawn is likely going to quickly collapse to the Russian forces. The Russians are going to make quick move. So just brace yourself for that. If, especially if you are a pro-Ukrainian. So don't get uh, emotional damage. This is just war. This retreat is not always a bad thing. Uh, although for this, for the Ukrainians here, they'll never get back the grounds any, uh, uh, forever, no? Unless no NATO enter the war. So over in the Verdiane region, Russian forces fully expanded and secured Verdiane with the latest uh, mapping updates across all the different uh, sources. And uh, so this Russian forces fully secured the northern flank and then they fully are on the way moving towards Bohovia Flanka already. So soon we are probably not never going to talk about fighting at Vodiani uh, anymore unless there is yet another Vodiani appearing on the map, which is not this Vodiani, uh, Vodiani because there is a lot of Vodianis uh, in uh, in Ukraine. So it's a very popular name. So, you know, just like, you know, my name is Vodiane Lim. You know, you, you probably know me as Wyatt, but you know, actually my real name is actually Vodiane. So, uh, so uh, no, I prefer the English pronunciation Vodian uh, because that makes me sound cooler. Uh, there is, so other, otherwise, uh, fighting is reported at uh, Katerinivka and Konstantinivka. So the, it's just that the interesting thing is that there is still surprisingly Ukrainian forces still in this area here. I'm not exactly sure what's ha what is happening right here uh, because this looks like very hard to reinforce. 
if any Ukrainian forces uh, that is positioned or the ordered to fight here, you no, know, they are given some sort of like a suicide mission, in a way, given how the front line have already moved to Katerinivka. So let's see how this continues to develop uh, in this area. So fighting, of course, as I mentioned, is moving towards Bohovyevlenka. So yeah, we move into the uh, Khernik region. So at the Khernik region, Russian forces are attacking at Sukhirine, towards Korakove and Georgivka. So frontline changes is over at uh, Sukhirine region. We're fighting uh, with Russian forces geolocated, as I mentioned in the frontline changes report, fully securing the southern uh, southern part of Sukhirine. This allows the Russians to have a foothold that will allow them to continue to fight on over at Sukhirine. So that's, that's the situation over in Sukhirine. We move into the Selidove region. At Selidove region, Russian forces have uh, expanded their grounds around uh, Novohorodivka, which, uh, which predictably, as we have previously mentioned in on the DPA's report, that they were going to push south towards Solidove. So fighting is reported at Mihailivka as well, as well as Solidove, which means that um, the Russians are now starting to push because fighting at Mihailivka can only mean fighting over in the eastern part of Solidove. So, uh, so we are seeing... Uh, multiple pro, uh, multiple prone attack on Seridove. The Battle of Seridove is going to uh, ignite or reignite. So because, yeah, previously I thought that it was already ignited, but no, yeah, subsequent uh, information just make it sounds weird. So then we have the uh, 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 no region. So Russian forces are still fighting in the region of Mykolaivka, which I did mention is going to take a bit of time. Fighting is reported at uh, Lake Sivka, as well as the west of Novo Khorodivka. So the, the, this is now the push, uh, but so far not much changes uh, noted around this area as the focus is probably all over in the Voleta region. And um, over in the northern flank of the Pokrov front, Russian forces are attacking at Novo Toretsky, Myro Libivka and Vozdivizenka. Uh, but otherwise, this this is nothing. Uh, like I mentioned, this is always going to be a pincer. This is going to be bypassed now by the uh, by the Russian forces. There's no reason to capture all these heavy entrenchments. We move into the uh, New York front. And the New York front, fighting to at Sukabalka, Nelipivka, Zelizny, Skabinivka, Thorax, Druzba. Shelling is reported at Klebanbik. And uh, so, let me zoom in a bit. So interesting thing is that uh, the Russian Defense Ministry have announced the capture of Nelipivka. Very, very interesting. This fully contradicts uh, whatever nonsense that the Ukrainian mapping is showing because they are now saying that Nelipivka is fully under Russian control, which given the Russian Defense Ministry's uh, propensity to delay uh, the announcement of capture a lot of the time, um, this means that the front line is definitely far away from here already. Uh, it's probably definitely around here. And uh, the full capture of Nelipivka, we, we have already, uh, it was already firstly announced on the 22nd of September. That's, that's like more than a week ago. So the, yeah, so it's just, you know, the, the, this, this parallel universe uh, is just disturbing. <laughs> it's just weird. Uh, but we have, I think, reported is that uh, that is named according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. Ukrainians also claim that fighting is still at Nelipivka. So let's see, you know, uh, whose reality is true. But the fact that there is still no geolocations around Nelipivka to highlight the capture is just, uh, yeah, it's also, you know, a bit slow. Uh, we move into Torex. Uh, the frontline changes at Torex have shown that the Russians have expanded the control in the center of uh, the city. The Russians continue to make uh, this deep advance into this into the city, and uh, it's interesting that they are they are choosing to go head on, um, deep into the enemy territory. And I'm not sure, uh, what's the what's the end game here? If they just keep, they basically digging. They're just digging deeper and deeper. deeper. They're drilling in, so a bit uh, a bit unusual. So we, let's wait and see how this uh continue to develop. Um, but if if we, we do, if this map is to, is to be believed, especially the Russian mapping, then there is a Ukrainian uh, encirclement that is potentially appearing. But yeah, but the the problem is this is a very foggy city. Uh, everything's in under the fog of war. We do not know what the hell is happening. So we move on. 
uh, over in the Bakhmut front, we have fighting reported mainly in the northern flank. And this northern flank attack makes it feel like you know, some kind of a major thing is just starting. According to the Russian reporting, fighting is reported at Chasifia, Mainske, Orikovo, Vasilevka, and Zaliniansky. The information is coming from the Russian Defense Ministry, by the way. So it makes it sound like the Russians have started some kind of offensive operation in this region, given the fact that Orikovo Vasilevka is actually mentioned, which is kind of unusual. Uh, because usually we don't see fighting at Orikovo Vasilevka. We have Zaliniansky. Maiske is also you no know, rare. You, it's pretty rare as well. So it does feel like something big is happening. But let's wait and see. This might be just the beginning. So if there is, if this continue to continue to be reported, then we probably know that uh, there's some uh, new offensive operations have started in the northern flank. Uh, of this uh, Bakhmut front. But uh, looking at the entrenchments, um, yeah, it's not really meaningful to, to go this direction. Uh, over in the Sivas front, at the Sivas front, Russian forces attacked Fedorivka, which is also part of the reporting of the fighting at Maiske and you know, Orkovo Vasilevka region. Uh, Vakum Okanyamske, Bilohorivka, and there's also alleged fighting over at Horakhorivka and uh, Serbianka. So, uh, not sure how to read it. Uh, maybe in the forest, maybe can't possibly be, be from the south because there is no updates to show that they're coming from the south. So anyway, we shall see how this continue to develop. Serious offensive is becoming a disappointment because there is no information about the Vimka region. So disappointing. So over in the Crimea front. So at the Crimea front, uh, Russian forces are fighting in the region of Novo Sadove, Toske, Dibrova and uh, through the Celebransky forest tree. So this usual. In the Novo Sadove region, uh, because of the updates uh, and uh, the latest mapping from uh, the Ukrainian mapping, this actually relates to, relates to Novo Sadove because it's so close. Um, the Russian forces have fully captured Nevsky according to the Ukrainian mapping. So Ukrainian information say that there is uh, Nevsky has fallen. This is also, uh, however, the 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 rest of the world, the Russian Russia Ukrainian Defense Ministry is talking about still fighting around, around that region. Otherwise, in uh the the Crimea Capri's latest geolocation also shows that my uh my, my Kievka has also fallen. So this marks double double capture by the Russian forces in this area here, pretty significant. And the fighting is reported towards Krakivka. So the the entire grounds between the two captured towns so we have we have uh Nevsky and uh, we have Makievka. the center part region uh it is not necessarily means uh that is under Russian control as well the Ukrainian salient may still exist so we're not entirely sure what the situation right here uh, so we will continue to monitor if to see if the Russians actually close up this gap or they attack in a pincer and close up the, this entire area, fully controlling the Zedabets River. So, but well, let's see how this goes. We, it's unclear at this moment. Now, uh, what's the actual situation right here? Uh, it's a very sudden, sudden double capture. So let's see how this go. Uh, over in the in in the northern part of the Svetovay front, because I can't really fit everything into the the area. Uh, there's fighting reported at Vishneve, Andreevka, and Stemakivka. There, there's Russian Defense Ministry, I think, in in the today's uh, report, which is currently not mapped into this map yet. I, I, I scrolled through and saw Russian Defense Ministry announced the capture of Vishneve, if I'm not wrong. So, yeah, this if this is true, then this will be quite a major tactical change or strategic change uh, in this area here. But uh, we'll talk about that tomorrow uh, because I'm not, I, I just scroll through and I, I saw the word Vishnebe. But let's see how this develops. Otherwise, nothing special. Uh, over in the Pichane front, Russian forces are attacking Novo Osinove, Glushkivka, Kurilakivka, Perestove, and Astemakivka. So, Russian forces expanding their control south of Pichane, a little bit of a tree line, around 800 meters. So, that's all. Um, so, this is a continuation. The fact that they have not stormed Kurilakivka. Is interesting because uh, the, the the amount of tentacles are not enough. They haven't reached a, a critical mass yet to, to have a safe attack into Kriyakivka, I guess. So let's see how these uh, continue to unfold. Over in the 
Kupian's front, we only have fighting reported at Sinkivka, and uh, that's about it. So we we'll move on away from the Kupian's front. Over at the Kaki, Kaki front, Russian forces are attacking in multiple regions. And it's starting to look more and more like some kind of offensive is happening. But uh, I will reserve this opinion a little bit because uh, it doesn't feel like the case per se. So fighting is reported at Lipsy, Staritsia, Burvaka, Burvaka, correct? Uh, Voschans, Taike, and Vochansky Kotori. The number of arrows is growing, uh, which is kind of weird. The, particularly over this center part in the Staritsia sector, according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry, the Russians are attacking in the Burvaka and Staritsia region. So this is a bit weird. Um, so we're not the this is not mentioned by the Russian Defense Ministry. I'm not exactly sure if this is a, a real push or they're just consolidating the town, as the the Burovaka is not fully captured, and uh, although we they previously did capture captured it before, or it could be yeah or or maybe this part of studies yeah yeah whatever it is, uh, there is still fighting around this area here so. We all need to continue to monitor the situation around here. And uh, we go into the Kursk front. So at the Kursk front, uh, there is so there is still the same usual uh, strategic situation. So we go from the southern flank first. So dual location of Ukrainian forces on the eastern part of uh, of Blackovo, confirming that the uh, Ukrainian forces are still in full control of Blackovo. Russian forces are attacking Plokovo region. Ukrainians are counter-attacking in this area. So they are still clashing heavily at Blackovo in the southern flank of the Kursk front. So that's about it. There's no change gener generally. Uh, in the northern flank, there's nothing else in the eastern flank. Over in the northern flank, the R Ukrainian forces are still on the attack in Crimea Noe, Ogovka, as well as Kamashevka. So Ukrainians are still pushing in the north, but there's no updates uh, of any any changes uh, in the western flank russian forces are still on their counter offensive at lyubimovka darino and mikolaivon darino ukrainian forces are counter attacking at lyubimovka so they are clashing in the Bimovka region this this area is pretty big uh, in case you do not know it's around uh the front line is more than 12 kilometers uh if you count the, the perimeter so in a straight line all the way down is like 13 14 kilometers this is a very long front line so so this this 14 kilometers is like much larger than some of the front in other factors so it's just that we are now moving non, more and more north of the globe so the map start to you know start to squish uh so yeah it's a it's a it's a it's a earth problem you know uh, over in the glushkovo sector this is glushkovo uh ukrainian forces are still attacking in the region of Veseloye. Novi put and uh, in Medvizhe region there is Russian rumors that the Ukrainian forces have withdrawn from Medvizhe. I have serious doubt because every time these kind of rumors nothing came true. Uh, Russian forces allegedly is attacking Novi put, so uh, that's all. According to some of the Russian copes, I mean the Russian uh, arguments, they say that the Ukrainian forces have been wiped, uh, have been uh, pushed out of Veseloye already. The attack was a failure. I don't know. It sounds like a cope to me. Uh, so, but whatever it is, the front line looks like this right now for the DPS mapping. And uh, that's it. So this is the full summary and uh, or the situation report for the day of 950 for the 30th of September, which includes information from the 1st of October. So thank you for watching. Press the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next update.